Good evening. Good evening. And welcome to all who are here and also those who are watching. We are pleased to have you joining our Eucharistic celebration. There are two collections for this weekend, our regular collection and the energy collection. Both can be placed in one of the three baskets found around the church. And as always, we thank you for your continued support. We've got several announcements. Tomorrow, please join the Holy Cross Stewardship Committee in viewing the short film, Part 2, Session 3, Walk Through the Mass, Exploring the Sacred Liturgy. On Wednesday, December 8th, it's a holy day of obligation. We'll have an 8 a.m. Mass on Wednesday at Our Mother of Sorrows and a 5.30 p.m. Mass here at Holy Cross. If you're not able to attend, the 5.30 Mass will be streamed live. And in, in addition, there's a schedule of masses at other churches around the area. Next weekend, the third Sunday of Advent, we will have our annual Blessing of the Baby Jesus Images. Please be sure to bring your baby Jesus to be blessed. Due to Christmas being on Saturday, Saturday this year, we are adding a special day for the Sacrament of Penance on Tuesday, December 21st, from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 at Our Mother of Sorrows. There will be four priests available. It doesn't say a.m. or p.m., so I would check the, uh, the bulletin. We will be decorating the church on Sunday, December 12th at 11.30 a.m. if you are available to come and give your time and talent. All are welcome. And thank you to everybody who supported the CMA through their gift of prayers and prayers. We have made steady prog progress in reaching our goal by Christmas. If you have not made your pledge to the CMA yet, please prayerfully consider helping our parish in that way. With the help of everyone, we can reach this goal by Christmas. Thank you. And Father Whelan is at Strong Hospital and is asking for your prayers for a speedy recovery. As we prepare ourselves, let us turn our attention to the altar where the holy sacrifice of the Mass will be celebrated by Father Marticello on this second Sunday of Advent. Sit in the 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Holy Cross Parish on the second Sunday of Advent. We begin, as we do always, to prepare our hearts to receive Christ coming to us in the Holy Eucharist in this most holy liturgy. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named God by God forever the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights, look to the east and see your children, gathered from the east and the west, at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you born aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God commanded that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled up to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Senhor 
The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness. How I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge in every kind of perception, to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Uterere and Trachonitis, and Lysantias, was tetrarch of Albilene, during the high priesthood of of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the word Advent is derived from the Latin word Adventus, which means coming. Therefore, Advent is a time that reminds us that we are awaiting someone's coming, the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, he already came into the world as the incarnate Word of God. That's what we remember and celebrate at Christmas. But Advent also reminds us that as we remember and celebrate His first coming, we are to also vigilantly await 
his second coming in glory, with the same hope and expectation of the first coming, the Christmas miracle. Thus, we are to joyfully await our mighty victor's return, who will bring with him an eternal reign of justice and peace. This is the day of Christ that St. Paul was referring to in the second reading, while urging his listeners to be pure and blameless upon this day. But St. Bernard said that there is also a third kind of coming, an intermediate coming, if you will, a coming between the first and the last, a spiritual coming of Christ to individual hearts, to those who don't know him nor love him, to those who haven't received him, to those who are estranged from him, to those who are struggling with their faith, to those who are stuck in sin, to those who may be suffering from addiction. He is coming to us right now through his church and her sacraments, through the words of the gospel, through the preachers preaching, through the sanctity of the lives of the saints. He is coming to us in this intermediate period between two comings, knocking at the doors of our hearts, awaiting to be let in, awaiting to be born within us. There is a famous painting of Christ called The Light of the World by the artist William Holman Hunt. In this painting, he depicts Christ as a king wearing a crown, and while carrying a lantern in the dark of night, he is knocking at a door. The artist was criticized by many of his contemporaries for forgetting the door handle. But he said to his critics, On this door, there's only one door handle, and it's on the inside. Because, my brothers and sisters, only we can open the door of our heart to Jesus, to let him in, to let him be born in us, to let him dispel the darkness, to let him heal us and restore us, and to let him reign over us. But in order to do so, in order for the Lord to come to us, we have to make it easy for him to come to us. We have to be properly disposed in order to receive him. Our hearts have to be prepared. And as we heard in today's Gospel, this is exactly what St. John the Baptist was preaching. He who is the forerunner of Christ, the one who said, I am a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And so we have to prepare the way of the Lord in our lives if we wish to see the salvation of God come to us. We must fill our valleys, that is, our deficiencies. Perhaps we have a deficiency in prayer, in knowledge of our faith, in sacred reading, in trust, in charity and good works. Perhaps we have a deficiency in the desire for God or the things that pertain to God. And if you do, that's okay. You can at least pray to have holy desires. And that's always a beautiful prayer. So we have to work on filling these valleys, don't we? Don't let this Advent go to waste. 
Take this time to recognize the valleys in your life and fill them by applying good and holy resolutions, kind of like what we do for Lent. While we are working on filling our valleys, we should also be working on making low the mountains and hills in our lives. Our mountains and hills are the obstacles of habitual sin in our life that keep us away from Christ. It is also our ego, our pride, our vanity that can seem to tower as high as a mountain. But our sins and our pride must be made low. And this, my friends, can be accomplished through repentance, by confessing your sins in the beautiful sacrament of reconciliation. Repentance is precisely what John preached in order to prepare the way of the Lord. Because repentance is the only way to make low our mountains and hills. It's the only way that our sins and pride are reduced and taken away. And so today, I, like John the Baptist, preach repentance. Repent. Turn back to the Lord and be saved. Prepare the way of the Lord. Because, my brothers and sisters, he cannot enter hearts that are filled with sin. He cannot reign alongside of sin. And he certainly remains far from the proud, the self-righteous, and obstinate sinners. He only comes to the humble, contrite hearts, the ones that are bruised from many strikes of the fist to the breast. Jesus comes to those who acknowledge their sins, those who acknowledge their need for forgiveness, those who come to him crying out for mercy. So just as Jesus was born in a humble little crib called the manger, so he will only be born within humble hearts. And that's why I encourage all of you, no matter what kind of sinner you may be, to make a good confession at least, at least once a month especially in this holy season of Advent, before Christmas, so that our mountains and hills of sin and pride can be made low, so that we can receive Jesus at Christmas with great joy, because it is he who makes our crooked ways straight and our rough ways smooth. It is he who straightens out our lives it is he who comes to bring tranquility in our lives and rest for our souls. It is Jesus, the Prince of Peace, who comes to bring with him his eternal peace. And so it is that Christ is the Christmas gift. He is indeed a really big gift because we're talking about God here. The creator of all things, who cannot be contained by space or time. And as almighty as he is, he chose to be born into the world as a little babe, because he wants to be Emmanuel, God with us. He wants to be born in us and dwell in us. He wants our hearts to be living tabernacles of his divine presence. And so if we wish to enjoy his divine life and presence in our lives, we better make some room and prepare the way of the Lord. Because he is near, knocking at the door of our hearts. Let him in and you will be forever blessed. God love you.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, be for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith, let us bring our prayers and petitions to the Lord. For the church, the new Jerusalem, that she may be named by God the peace of justice and the glory of God's kingdom, filled with her children, returning from the east and from the west, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That God may lead the nations by the light of his holy laws, planted in every heart with his mercy and justice for company, we pray to the Lord. That men and women may generously open their hearts to God's invitation to serve his people through the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the, joy, the voice of John the Baptist may re-echo in the desert of our secular, secular society, helping us to prepare the way of the Lord and to make straight his paths in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those enrolled in our book of prayers, and for all those whose road is toilsome through illness, poverty, loneliness, or grief, that God may fill up the valleys of sorrow and lower the mountains of ob obstacles, showing those who toil his loving salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord that God, who began a good work in the souls of our faithful departed, may continue to complete it until they are fully ready for heavenly life in Christ Jesus, especially Miranda Espinoza and Jerry Fien, and for Richard Clinney, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. We pray to the Lord. We unite these and all our four prayers to those of the Immaculate Blessed Virgin Mary and speak them in the name of her Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this 
is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
nations be your God. Walk in ways of justice. Show each other at all time. Every kind of goodness in the midst of you is one you do not know. 
act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd just like to wish all of you a happy and holy Advent and encourage you not to be so distracted by all the hustle and bustle that the Christmas season brings from the secular society and consumerism, but to be really focused on the true meaning of this holy season. To remember that Jesus is the reason for the season, okay? <laughs> we all got that? Good. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks to you.